On this episode of Exactly How, we're going to show you how to buy a portfolio of properties all at once. We're going to explain how you can easily analyze these properties and how to line up the funding you need on this episode of Exactly How. You're listening to the Exactly How podcast, where you'll hear the underground, closely guarded wealth building secrets of successful people around the globe. Discover exactly how to improve your mental, physical, and financial health. Feel better, make more money, live, give, and prosper in today's exciting, fast-paced world filled with opportunity for those who know exactly how. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Connected Investors podcast and YouTube show, Exactly How. During this episode, you're going to discover exactly how to buy portfolios of properties. We're talking about 10 to 100 properties at one time. And the man who's teaching us is an expert in acquiring cash flowing properties and scaling. Also figuring out the best way to add value to maximize appreciation. For those of you who are new, my name is Ross Hamilton, today's host and CEO of ConnectedInvestors.com. Today we have the privilege to learn from a man who has built a very large portfolio of single family houses that generates guaranteed government subsidized income every month. He was actually our 2018 Real Estate Investor of the Year. And you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to actually uh, pull in a little clip from that uh, throughout this episode here because it was a really cool uh, show uh, this guest and I put together after we found out uh, how successful he's been in this, in this undertaking. And prior to his career in real estate, he never really had a job. He always just kind of had a little side hustle, a business of his own from selling paintball guns online and yeah. Uh, all sorts of crazy stuff. He's really done it all and he found his home here in real estate because one day he was looking for a condo to rent out and he realized that uh, he can get into real estate. All that changed when he couldn't sell his first condo so he decided to rent it out. He soon realized that cash flow was the way to go. I would describe our guest as very creative. I'd like to introduce you to the one, the only, Tom Cruise. Actually, in this, in this scenario, the one, the only, you're one of, you're the one and only Tom Cruise in real estate. So that, right, we'll go with that. People are going to ask, that is your real name, correct? That is my real name, yeah. C-R-U-Z. Okay, this, is, this isn't C-R-U-Z. There you go. Yeah. Well, Tom, <laughs> thanks for teaching us exactly how to buy portfolios of properties. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, we're really excited to, uh, to have you here. I've uh, this is one of the first episodes I wanted to do. Tom is a local investor here in Wilmington, North Carolina. And with his strategy, he kind of came out of nowhere and just became one of the investors here in town in a very short period of time. So I'm really excited for you to learn from someone that I learned from as well. So before we jump in to how to buy portfolios of properties, Tom, you contribute a lot of your success to networking and constantly right. talking to other people about real estate and partnering with them. Uh, why do you think networking has played such a big role in your success? Um, I was able to, to use networking and connecting with other investors uh, in order to obtain funding, financing, connections. I mean, it's, it's everything locally. You know, when you're trying to get a million dollar loan on a portfolio of houses, being able to have a referral to a local banker that, you know, it's, it's especially in the small community banks, it's, it's super helpful. Um, a lot of the best deals are not going to be just sitting on MLS waiting, you know, to be picked up. They're going to usually get picked up, you know, before they even hit the market. Um, so that's a big reason why. Um, also for actually funding the deal, you know, I've worked with a lot of different investors that came up with the cash and I came up with the financing or I did the financing and they came up with the cash. Um, so there's always different ways to find um, complementary skills or talent or resources, you know, by, by networking. Um, and I've done that through all sorts of mediums, you know, just unintentionally meeting really high net worth individuals at cars and coffee and different car meets, um, going to local real estate investor meetups, going to um, uh, using meetup.com, uh, a few other uh, websites that I think I've used in the past to just, you know, find local uh, real realtor meetups. They have a lot of times finding the best realtor for investors. Um, yeah, those are all just some, some examples of how I've been able to meet other people that have been able to advance my portfolio. Yeah. I mean, at Connected Investors, we're all about networking. So it's really cool to hear directly yeah. from someone who, you know, was able to really, uh, you know, turbocharge their success in real estate through 
networking. And Correct. what makes the Exactly How Financial Freedom podcast unique is every show comes with a detailed action plan. So we're going to pull all the steps out of Tom's head and give you a step-by-step -step guide that you can follow at Exactly how.com. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, please go over to the Connected Investors YouTube because we're going to show you some things during this particular show that you're not really going to be able to understand unless you see what we're talking about. So make sure to subscribe to the Connected Investors uh, YouTube channel because there's a lot of great information there. In the description of the videos, we keep that packed with all sorts of links and free giveaways and all the stuff you need. And at any time, you can always visit exactlyhow.com to get a full archive. So when you visit exactlyhow.com, you're going to be able to review the show notes and throw your name into the hat to win our $3,000 software called PIN. This allows you to pinpoint the most highly motivated, motivated sellers in any market across the United States is a $3,000 value. Someone's going to get it for free here today in just a few moments. Go ahead and visit exactlyhow.com, learn more about the show, and you can also pick up this free gift we're giving away, the Inside Guide to Funding Investment Real Estate. This is a book I got paid a lot of money up front to write. It's not just some self-published book, not that those aren't good. But we had a big, uh, a big individual come behind us and say, Ross, we need you to write a book about funding because your website facilitates $60 billion a month in funding for real estate investors. So we put all the best secrets in this book and we're giving it to you because you're a listener. Okay, Tom, let's go ahead and jump right into this. Um, we've said a few words that I want to make sure everyone uh, understands before we dive in. Okay. We said the word uh, portfolio. Can you just uh, define what a portfolio means? Sure. Uh, portfolio is just a collection of homes that we're renting out um, under, in our case, we have our own property management company. So we only manage our own properties. So we're, our property managers are managing our portfolio. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, majority of our, of our units are single family. We do have several duplexes, triplexes and quads. Um, but for the most part, we found the most successful single family. Great, great. Now, thanks for uh, clarifying that. So a portfolio is a collection of properties. What a great thing to collect, Tom. Yeah. You know, some people <laughs> collect well. <laughs> you know, baseball cards. You just, you, you just collect properties. Yeah. And you also um, mentioned they're all uh, subsidized, government right. subsidized. Uh, there's another term for that, but I'll let you go ahead and describe it. Yeah. So we work with several different local, state, and federal agencies, obviously the big one is Section 8. We have a large percentage of our units being subsidized by the federal government. Um, we also work with local um, charities such as Salvation Army. They do a lot of funding for uh, low-income tenants that need help. Um, we also work with um, other ministries, you know, any, any, any churches. And actually, there's several different places in town that are getting funding from the state, and they're used, you know, to... Uh, fund local tenants and we work with them a lot as well. Um, wow. Yeah. I'm glad I asked and that question because I, I thought it was just section eight, but you've just, uh, you've just opened my head up to a few, few other options correct. out there. Yeah. Yeah. So for example, Salvation Army, we've had several tenants that they pay their first month's rent, their security deposit, and they guarantee the rent for up to six months. Um, and that comes directly direct deposit, just like section eight. Um, we just try to diversify as far as the amount of the organizations. You never know if, you know, on the federal level, if there's some budget cuts or if they cut entitlements, you know, it would affect our section eight. So we do, um, we try to work with different, with different ones. We also have a lot of private tenants as well. Um, probably 25% of our total portfolio, maybe a little bit less is, is private tenants. Meaning okay. no subsidies. Yeah. And you know, I'm going to have a little fun here real quick because uh, when we shot that video of you being the real estate investor of the year, yeah. uh, well-deserved for sure. Uh, we were driving around in, uh, in a really nice car of yours. And I asked you a question, how many rentals does it take to get this car? So I'm going to go ahead and play that clip real quick. How many, uh, how many rentals does it take to be able to buy one of these things passively? Uh, I target about $500 per house per cat for cash flow. So if you figure, depending on how much you put down 4,000 bucks a month for a uh, payment or something like this, I would say with insurance, taxes, everything else that's going to be associated with owning this, I would say 20 units, 20 single family units would be uh, comfortable to, to buy one. All right, there it is. So roughly 20 rentals to <laughs> drive a Lamborghini. Yeah, that's uh, still pretty accurate, um, uh, especially with the rents going up the way they are now and the amount of investment happening, at least locally, um, we're, we're seeing consistent rents 
year over year, month over month, even going, going up. So. All right. Well, guys, I, ho I hope this got everyone's attention. And if you're watching this, uh, I'll, there's a link in this, the description of this video to apply to be this year's Real Estate Investor of the Year. You're not going to be competing against Tom. He can only be crowned once. <laughs> Go ahead and click the link. It doesn't matter if you've only done a handful of deals. We like to see momentum and attitude and uh, promise for, uh, for the future. So go ahead and click the link, apply. Maybe you can be the real estate investor of the year. Okay, all right, let's jump into it. Exactly how to buy portfolios of properties. Sometimes buying your first property is the hardest. So don't skip buying your first one. Buy 10, buy 15, buy 20 at a time. That's really what you want. The economies yeah. of scale really help uh, keep you profitable there. So before the show, Tom and I broke it down into three steps into finding these portfolios evaluating them, and then we're gonna to lightly touch on funding them, right? But remember, you can visit exactlyhow.com and pick up, this, uh, pick up this free book while supplies last. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, no shipping or anything, it's a digital version, all right? So, Tom, let's go ahead and talk about finding them. So someone's like, you know what, sure, I wanna buy 100 properties at a time. What do you start doing? Yeah, so the way that we did it, um, we started first by talking to our commercial real estate agent. We have a really good local broker. He's um, really in tune with the market, figuring out exactly what's being sold. Um, I would say the most important aspect on whoever on your team when you're buying is to have a really good agent. You know, make sure they're connected. It's not their first day on the job. Um, ours, you know, is part of the Wilmington Housing Authority. He's, you know, um, on the thing actually on the board of a few different um, local entities. And he actually helped us find this deal right when it went on to the North Carolina commercial MLS. Um, and we were able to, on the, the large portfolio that we acquired last year, that's one that we found, you know, through simply connections. Um, how, we many, how, many, how many properties were on that? It that was um, 90, so I think it was 93 structures, 99 or 100 units. And then we bought a few other additional houses um, outside of that that we can come combined into one larger, it was about a hundred unit portfolio. So let me just ask you a question. If after you bought that portfolio, you got it up and running, if you didn't feel like working anymore, is that kind of like, I'm done? Um, as far as? Just being able to survive, live in a nice house, have a nice Oh car. yeah, I mean. Just, just for yeah, someone yeah. who's kind of who's new on the line, because some people don't realize you're just one deal away from like really leveling up. No, definitely. I mean, especially the way that we bought it, it was already cash flowing. I mean, it wasn't, you know, the number that we wanted to. So it took us about six months to really stabilize it and get it to create, you know, we, we doubled the rent roll there in the first six to eight months. Um, and that was mostly just to kicking out a lot of the, you know, tenants that weren't performing or tenants that just, you know, were causing problems and replacing them with section eight subsidized, you know, guaranteed income tenants. So now, yes, I mean, I could, we could you're done. Handling, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm mostly just focusing on acquiring more properties, um, property management. You know, I have a team of five people that handle, um, you know, the maintenance and day-to-day -day stuff. So that's correct. Yeah. So, you know, for everyone on the line here, you're just one big portfolio deal away from whatever it is you're looking to, uh, to get out of life, and it, and it is possible. So what's, uh, you talked about networking being important. Yeah. You talked about having a, a good realtor. Are there any other tips you can give people on how to find these, uh, you know, packages of properties? Yeah. Um, a big thing that we do is we call property management companies up, um, especially towards the middle of the end of the month after they've already gotten all their complaints and, you know, are the lowest in their cash flow. And um, we'll find that if you build good relationships with these property management companies, they'll tell you about landlords that, hey, they just want to get out. They are sick of the expenses or they're sick of managing three, four or five properties where there's not, you know, a ton of money for them to have their own property manager, but it's still enough for them to do it themselves. It's, it's kind of like a really weird spot. Um, so we buy a lot from them. Um, we've probably bought four or five portfolios minimum, I would say seven to 10 units in each one. Um, anywhere from, you know, the large Sawyer companies or the Century 21s or the Cobalt Bankers, they all have property management teams, you know, building those relationships, connecting with them on LinkedIn. Hey, you know, if you hear of any of your landlords that want to sell, call me first. And, you know, you call me, call me first. Call me first. Yeah. yeah. Call me first. Yeah. Yeah. Throw out. I mean, we throw out kickbacks. I mean, all sorts of stuff for referral fees. Um, that all comes into play and it's super helpful in, in getting, you know, just the phone ringing and just getting leads coming out of nowhere. And after a while, I mean, after you get 10, 15, 20 units and you're going to meetups and you're networking, you're just going to become the guy, you know, kind of I've become locally. I get calls every day from people wanting to sell their house. 
you know, they see me driving by or looking at a property. They say, hey, I'm trying to sell my house. I, I know you have a bunch of properties locally. Do you want to buy mine? Yeah, of course I want to buy yours. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. Um, another big thing is just we, we make offers at scale. I mean, we'll I have my agent on, you know, on MLS. If a deal comes on, we get alerted. We're making an offer sight unseen, put it under due diligence for 10 days, give them, you know, a couple hundred bucks up front, and then we'll go look at it after we got it wrapped up under contract. Um, I would say 90% of the time we close on it unless there's something completely misrepresented in the listing um, or, you know, they, they just didn't show. A lot of times they don't show interior pictures of the tenants in there. So that's yeah. another big source is just if you're fast on MLS and you have funding and lending and you're ready to go, um, you, can, you can find really good deals on there as well. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And then I'd imagine – the people in Wilmington, the amount of people in Wilmington that are actively looking for portfolios is far less than the people that are looking for one or two little fix and flips. Yeah, that was a big way because I think we were competing against one or two other groups when we bought this other portfolio. Um, I think that was a $6.1 million deal. Those portfolio, those um, people lost out. I think they actually even offered a little bit more than we did, but they wanted 90, 120 day closes, you know, because they wanted to have all this due diligence time we closed in 60 days and only asked for 45 days in due diligence to check out a hundred houses. Um, that's that, why you have a fast, that's why you have a fast car. Yeah. Yeah. We need <laughs> really fast and, uh, that, like I mean, if I'm going to do this, I need a Lamborghini now. Yeah. No, that that's why I justified it. And then, yeah, exactly. So, exactly. but yeah. And then, I mean, I personally went to a lot of the units myself. I had an inspector, I had my contractor, we just kind of divided and conquered and that's how we were able to make the deal happen so fast. Great. Yeah. A lot of good, uh, a lot of good value there for sure. Before we jump into step two, which you've kind of touched on a little bit, I have to announce the winner of our $3,000 software that locates all of the vacants, all the inherited. You can even look for property packages inside pin, which I'm excited to show you. Um, you can see all the landlords who are actively, uh, who you can see all the landlords inside there and you can see all their holdings. So Tom, I think once you, uh, once you peel this curtain back for you, you're going to really like this. You can oh, just yeah. give it to your, you can give it to your realtor and say, go get it. Yeah. Um, and today's winner is looking for a private money partner to fund your flips or rentals. Go direct to the source. PrivateLenders.com, a free marketplace that instantly matches you with up to five private money lenders to save thousands by having non-bank lenders compete to be your funding partner. PrivateLenders.com. Today's winner is Chris Doyle. Chris, congratulations. You uh, went to exactlyhow.com. You enjoy the show. You comment. You share a lot of love. So we're sharing the love right back with you. Congratulations, Chris. Uh, we'll be in touch with you real soon. Okay. So step number two and three is to uh, evaluate, and then we're going to talk about funding. So great. Portfolio came up, 100 units. You got to go look at them all. How are you evaluating these uh, you know, quickly? Yeah, so we kind of looked at it from – First of all, to see if it was even worth, you know, putting under contract or making an offer, we look at it at the price per door, you know, price per unit, which I think came out to around 65,000, um, a little bit less. That was the most attractive part right off the bat. We knew that we wanted to be able to um, add value to the units, uh, force appreciation. Also, the rent rolls were very low, so that just there's a ton of room to be able to increase that. Um, as far as physically inspecting them, we were the big stuff. I mean, we would look at roofs. We drove by all hundred units, um, took pictures and talked about it with a roofing contractor, talked about it with our uh, inspector. Uh, we looked at HVAC. Uh, we actually did a lot of just spot checking. Uh, we'd pick out 20 or 30 out of the hundred, see exactly which ones are, um, look older, you know, especially when we drove by, if we could see it from the street, we just see which ones those are. Um, and then on the interior, it's a lot more complicated because there's tenants there and trying to go through a hundred, occupied units around scheduling in 45 days is next to impossible. So we started with the vacant properties. Then we went to the ones that from the exterior looked the worst and we just needed to see if the interior matched. Um, and then we started just walking through, looking at flooring, looking at um, if there's any mold or big leaks, fires that had been there previously, that compromised structure. Um, and then we just kind of made it like a, a triage list of, you know, once we bought them, which ones we're going to be working on first. Um, and that's essentially how we evaluated them is the, the big items first and putting together which ones um, needed the most work, came up with estimates, worked that out, 
use that as leverage in negotiating further after we were under contract. I think we got it down to the 150 grand. And um, yeah, that was just the, the basic evaluation. Gotcha. No, that's, uh, that's great. I think most people on the line here can say, hey, I, I can do that. I can drive by a house. I can, oh, yeah. I, I, I can run through that. There's, there's nothing complicated here, people. Tom is just out there networking. He's going to talk about how he got his funding, probably from networking as well, if, I, uh, if my memory serves me correctly. Correct. And uh, again, guys, we're pulling all this information out of Tom's head at exactlyhow.com. Go ahead and go right now. Go get the show notes. Download um, everything that we have on that page because you're going to want to re-review the information that we're touching on here. Uh, this is this is really good, powerful stuff. So, Tom, um, great. So you've evaluated the deals, and you know, honestly, after hearing your uh, you know the story of buying this, the other group, I don't think they were unreasonable with the due diligence time. No, you just you were just a little quicker. Yeah, I mean, and that's pretty common, uh, just because they were going to have a company come out manually do inspections for each one. We were willing to take the risk. I mean, at sixty five thousand dollars a door, the average unit that we were buying was three bedrooms it would have to be in really, really rough shape. And I already knew that wasn't the case because I'm, I'm downtown all the time. I was able to just randomly drive by some of them uh, before we even made the offer. Um, so at some point, you just got to jump in and, you know, well, go for tell it. Tell me a little bit about, uh, about kind of your, your buy box. Are you only in Wilmington, North Carolina? Or are you starting to kind of spread out? What's your... Uh... Um, yeah, I mean, right now we're still able to acquire a lot of properties under 100 grand that still cash flow really well. So there's really no reason for us to move out. I really don't want to build another property management team out of state. Um, where, like I said, my goal is still 500 units um, before I'm looking to either sell the whole portfolio or um, uh, you know, sell to an inst inst institutional buyer. But yeah, there, there's a few different options. But yeah, right now... It's just really, it, it's working really well here. We have really good relationships with all the subsidized programs. We have good in, relationships with inspectors. We have a really good contracting team here. So um, we know what everything costs. You know, you move somewhere else, you're now changing your costs or changing how much a turn costs. You're changing, you know, rents. Every, everything changes. And it's at that point, it's just not worth it to us. Yeah. You ever look into building properties? We do. Uh, when, when, actually, when we acquire those 100 units, um, a few of those lots, uh, they threw in, I think, three or four lots um, that we're looking at building duplex and triplexes on. We haven't done it yet, um, just between the hurricane last year and then getting everything stabilized with the, with the portfolio this year. Um, but it's probably something we're going to do in 2020. Great, great. All right, so you guys know how to uh, find them, how to evaluate them. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, funding them. Sure. And uh, I'm excited about this because I have a, I have a question I'm going to ask afterwards on what comes first, the chicken or the egg but you have, uh, you're ready to fund this deal. You said it was like six ish million dollars. Correct. So obviously you had your funding lined up uh, ahead of time. Tell, yeah. me, tell me a little bit about that, how that all came to, uh, to be. Yeah. So this one, I was able to really leverage my past experience, you know, with the units that I already had, um, finding an investor that was actually a friend's dad of mine that was really, you know, keen on getting into real estate, but he didn't have the time. He was retired. He really just wanted to, you know, have, a way to diversify his, his existing portfolio of, of investments. And um, we connected, you know, we worked out a deal where he would bring the cash to the table, I would do the financing and be on the note by myself. And we were then able to um, put it together. So he came up with the cash, we already had a lender in mind um, that I had worked with previously. And we were able to get really good terms. I think we we're at 85% loan to value. So we only had to come up with 15%, which is pretty common when you're dealing with with this many properties. Um, you can find banks that will go up that high, which um, you know a lot of people are used to paying 75% loan to value or 80% loan to value. Um, but that extra 5% really helps, especially when you can put that towards improvements or you know just as a cash reserve. Um, and then we got an amortized. So your cash guy had to come with you know, a little more than a million bucks really to get it. Yeah, I mean, he, he scored. That's, there's a lot of people that would wanna put a million dollars in 100 houses like that. And you were on the, you were on the note. I was on the note. His only risk was the million. My risk was the 5.1. So yeah, I, w I financed it by myself and he, um, he financed it. Cash financed it. That's great. You know, we talk a lot about individuals that are looking for, for funding and if they don't have the experience, they don't have the cash to go find a partner who has yeah. to partner with someone who has the experience in the cash. Because Tom said something that we talked about on a, a few other podcasts. There are people that have time and no money, people that have money and no time. You know, yeah. So don't think that you can't bring something valuable to the table. If you have hustle, if you have drive, you know, that's, that's what uh, successful people look for. Someone who's going to go out and get it. 
right? Because they just yeah. they got they got money, but they don't want to do any of that other stuff. And just, the way the way that I was able to kind of close that deal is because I mean, it's I've been on the other side of listening to this podcast. I was like, oh great, you know, I don't have a friend with a million dollars. Yeah. It's not even about that because once you actually have the track record and you start looking, it's very it's very straightforward to to it's everybody wants to be in real estate to begin with. Anyone you talk to that says that you're doing rental properties, everyone says, Oh, I've been wanting to do that too. So it's not a hard sell to get someone to invest in real estate with you. The hard part is convincing them that you know what you're doing. So the way I sold it to him was, Hey, look, I already have, you know, this, my own little portfolio that I started beforehand. Um, these are the systems that I have, you know, here's the software that I use. Here's all the reporting. Here's, you know, I have an accountant providing financials to be able to, you know, kind of back that I know how to manage the properties and keep them occupied. Um, that's the biggest thing after how many, that. How many did you have uh, before you bought this portfolio? I think it was like 180 something. Oh, you already had 180. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, those properties though came from, I had two other investors I worked with and then I had a hundred and some of my own. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, let's, let's go all the way back for people. You're okay. outside of the condo. What was your, what was your second and third move? Uh, after the condo, mm -hmm. more condos, more condos back in 2010. Yeah. Or 2009 when I bought my first condo, I um, saw how easy it rented out after I tried to sell it. I couldn't sell it. I was upside down. I, you know, used Obama's tax credit back at the time. And I, um, I think I only put 5% down or three and a half percent down on it. Um, and I tried to sell it. Economy wasn't good. And it just made more sense to rent it, rented it out pretty much same day. Um, went, you know, super overboard on the screening process. Cause I wanted to make sure I didn't get burned. Um, rented it to really nice tenants. And then, after I saw that, I went and rinsed and repeated on another condo. I think I actually did it four or five times. I think about like five or six condos after that. And then realized that, you know, the HOAs kill you. There's no reason to be paying 140,000 in a unit when you can buy them for 60 or 70,000 um, and be able to really get a lot more, yeah. add a lot more value. You know what I mean? And you have to put a whole lot less money down. It's one thing when you only put 12 grand down on a $60,000 unit and you can rent it out for 1300 a month, you know, to a subsidized program then shelling out, you know, 30 grand on a $150,000 unit to rent it out for maybe another hundred or $200 more. So that's cash just, on cash is just not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Um, anything else you want to kind of add to, uh, to the process or, you know, inspiration or thoughts you want to give to our listeners here that are, that are excited uh, to learn what we've shared? Yeah. I think the most important part is just to do it. Um, I have a lot of friends that, you know, I work with, with real estate investing, investing, and they ask a million questions, but they never actually buy their first property. Um, you know, even if you don't jump in directly into a portfolio, or if you think that there's too much risk, you actually just have to look at the numbers. You know, it's, you know, I know depending on the city that you're in, I know you have, you know, listeners from all over the world. Um, it can be more difficult, but buy in an area that you don't live in, you know, find a good property manager, interview them. There's always, you know, good property management companies that you can talk to, um, go and look for the 60, $70,000 units only, you know, invest 10, 15 grand on a down payment, figure out exactly what it's going to take. But if you look at it, your mortgage is 300 bucks a month, you know, worst comes to worst. You can always rent that, that three bedroom or two bedroom house. That you just bought for 70 grand for at least three or $400. So unless you really buy in a terrible, you know, war zone area that you can never rent or if you uh overpay for something you know and you don't do your due diligence or you have a bad agent it's really difficult to actually mess up you know uh, <laughs> that's gonna be the work. that's gonna be the quote of this episode it's <laughs> really difficult to actually mess up you know where people mess up the most tom they never freaking start exactly and that's or exactly over, where you know they, a lot of my friends are they, they overthink uh, everything they come up with all these scenarios that yeah. never actually happen right yeah. what about this what about that i don't know those things yeah. never happen to me. They're going to happen if, to someone. What if, it's always the, the big concern is always, what if they call me at two in the morning about a toilet issue? I was like, that never actually happens. That's just like a landlord story that people think happens every day. Like if you have a plumber, go out there. It's, it's not the end of the world. The answer you know? is why do they have your cell phone? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's another big question. So yeah. um, my biggest piece of advice is just start, you know, you can go to every seminar, you can spend thousands on, um, uh, whatever books and forums and, you know, going to all these different conferences, learning from all these gurus, but until you actually buy a house, deal with a tenant and get that first, you know, direct deposit in your bank yeah. account. It's, it's all just, you know, theory. That first direct deposit in your bank account. I love yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I think the, uh, what got me 
into real estate to where I had about 50 ish rentals by 24 was I just jumped in yeah. and started doing it and just, I asked, I was ready, fire, aim and yeah. uh, not, I wouldn't necessarily suggest that, but once you're in a deal, then you have something to talk about. Exactly. You, know, you can talk you about it and, and you'll matter. find out just a lot more people are willing to help you out. You know, if you have a good team around you, a good accountant, a good closing attorney, a good agent, you know, a good inspector, it, it all, it all falls into place. Um, yeah. Not as scary or as daunting until you actually just buy one unit. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tom, let me ask you the most important question. What yeah. do you think your life would be like if you never found real estate? If you were able to sell your condo and it was easy and you didn't get stuck with it, where do you think you'd be today? Um, I would still be trading time for money as far as like running my business. Um, I had a marketing company um, that I was doing before and I was spending all day, you know, dealing with clients and reporting and um, working on different campaigns. And I would continually be doing that versus now being able to detach my time from how much money I actually earn. It's simply dependent on how many properties I buy. You know, I already know if I buy a $70,000 property, I'm going to make $857 a month on it. It's just going to happen. Um, as far as where I would be, it, it would just be a lot more stressful. You know, right now I could go on vacation for a week and have a good property management team. Every, all the issues still get resolved. Um, I don't have to be involved every day in it. So that's the beauty of the whole, you know, passive income thing. It takes some work to get it to be passive, but after that, um, it really is like the best form of income. After that, you have more time to network with yeah. high, high net worth people, which yeah. then in turn give you more net worth. Oh yeah. You know, so it's this, uh, it's this beautiful flywheel that once you get spinning, it's, uh, it's the things that, uh, you know, it's the American dream there. So yeah. Tom, uh, do you have time for the rapid fire section? Sure. All right, here we go. I'm gonna ask you a few questions. Just first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. On a scale of one to 10, how strict were your parents? Four. Get up early or stay up late? Early. How many hours of sleep do you get? Seven. Favorite or most recent book that you read? Uh, Fast Lane and Millions. If you could be any superhero, who would it be? Uh, Iron Man. Something everyone should do less of. Waste less time. Something everyone should do more of. Buy more properties. <laughs> uh, Bitcoin, bang or bust? Bust. Will people visit Mars in your lifetime? Yes. All right. <laughs> uh, oh, one more question. Have you seen Ford versus Ferrari yet? I have not. I'm actually supposed to see it this weekend. Yeah, I saw it last weekend. It was good. Cool. It was good, man. Yeah, was it, was fun, cool. yeah it, was a, it was it was a fun movie. Um, well, great. Thanks so much for your time, Tom. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and for everyone who is with us, you made it to the end of the show. Most people don't finish what they start, but you found a lot of value in the information that Tom and I delivered you. So all we ask is to give us a thumbs up, like, comment, definitely subscribe over at YouTube so you don't miss any of these. One tip could be the difference between success and failure in 2020. So go ahead and give us a comment, thumbs up right now. Don't think someone else is going to do it. I want you to do it right now. I really appreciate your time here. And make sure to take a look at the archive of the Exactly How show. There are some amazing ones. Uh, the, the economic update on 2020, the new, the potential crash and debunking all that stuff. Tom, you got to definitely listen to that. But everyone on the line, make sure to listen to that. The pre-REO call that we did with George Newberry, absolutely amazing. A whole new type of uh, property slash note that you can buy. And just go to exactlyhow.com. Take a look at all of the episodes because every episode comes with free gifts and stuff. So you can just go right on exactlyhow.com. It's like a goodie bag. Every episode comes with fantastic gifts and downloads. So make sure to check that out. I'll talk mm -hmm. to you on the next show. Bye-bye. The Connected Investors app connects you with investors, notifies you of available properties, helps locate cash buyers, and secure private funding to close deals. Set up in seconds to become a member of the Connected Investors social network. Now you can scroll through your main feed to find cash buyers, see investment properties not available to the general public, and network with investors by adding your own comments to a thread to keep the conversation going. The Control Center is your connection to add properties to sell, start new discussions, connect with local investors, and even find private funding. The Notifications tab will keep you alerted to new investment properties and offers, 
you'll also find new friend requests to connect directly with the community to build your network. From the property marketplace, you'll be able to find, favor, and make offers on investment properties. Download Connected Investors today to find, figure, fund, and flip investment properties on the go.